put it right here. Right there. Oh, gotcha. I want to put it on top. There we go. Okay. Hi, good morning, everyone. Thank you all for being here. Uh, as we all know, the issue of housing affordability has been at the forefront of Arizonans' minds for years. I have heard from too many people who have spent years saving money just to have the dream of pur purchasing a home remain a distant reality. When I talk to my own kids about home ownership, it's a conversation about how, not when. I was born and raised in an Arizona where a middle-class family could buy their own home, and that should be the reality for the next generation too. But to make it so, we must take action. As governor, my priority is always making life better for everyday Arizonans in meaningful ways. And I won't let any opportunity to go, do so go to waste, which is what brings us to why we are here today. In January, I announced the Arizona is Home Mortgage Assistance Program in my State of the State address, and today, I am proud to say that this initiative is officially underway and available to qualifying first-time home buyers. The Arizona Department of Housing will distribute grants to two well-established home lending institutions, Chicanos Por La Causa and Trellis, to enhance down payment assistance and mortgage interest rate relief. They can pair the Arizona is Home program with other existing programs, further enhancing home buyer capacity. This critical assistance will help working class Arizonans who are at or below 120% of the median income in their area. That means a Phoenix family of three making up to $111,000 a year will have a greater chance to purchase a quality affordable home. And I know that rural communities often get the short end of the stick with competing with our larger counties. And that's why we've created additional assistance through the Arizona Industrial Development Authority that is only available for Arizonans living outside of Maricopa and Pima counties. These funds will enhance the Arizona Industrial Development Authority's already existing homebuyer assistance program that helps with down payment and mortgage interest rate relief. Regardless of which avenue you take, eligible home buyers will work with lenders to utilize the program in the way that works best for them. Today reflects a promise I made to Arizonans to do everything in my power to lower costs and make the American dream a reality. I'm proud of the work that we have done to move the needle forward on this issue, but I know the work is far from over. I will continue working to make sure I will continue to make sure that working Arizonans are at the center of every conversation and every action we take. And with that, I am proud to hand it over to CEO uh, Joan Service of the Arizona Housing Department. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I'm honored to be working for a governor who has prioritized making housing affordable so that middle-class families can afford to stay here live near their job and their relatives, and live in a community with high quality schools for their kids. So let's give her a round of applause. 
So it is with great pleasure that I join Governor Hobbs today as she launches her groundbreaking initiative, Arizona's Home, that will change the landscape of home ownership in our state. Enabled by last year's bipartisan budget allotment into the State Housing Trust Fund, the Arizona Department of Housing conducted numerous stakeholder sessions to, to, to determine the best way to allocate the significant investment. Repeatedly, we received feedback advocating for investments across the housing continuum, from helping our unsheltered neighbors to creating home ownership opportunities and ensuring housing stability. As such, we're proud to have allocated $10 million from the State Housing Trust Fund into Arizona's home. We've also financed programs that construct or acquire and rehabilitate homes for sale to low or moderate income eligible individuals. <laughs> Additionally, we've granted funds to local communities to assist residents in maintaining secure housing through emergency home repair programs. At ADOH, we're thankful to partner with the Arizona IDA, Trellis, and CPLC for supporting prospective homeowners throughout their journey to owning a home. They will not only provide financial help at closing, but also provide housing counseling and home buyer education to ensure individuals and families are equipped to handle unforeseen challenges while pursuing the American dream of home ownership. Home ownership is not just about having a place to live. It's about building a foundation for a bright, brighter future, creating stability for families, and fostering strong communities. However, we understand that the path to home ownership can be challenging especially for those facing financial barriers, and especially in today's housing market. Our state continues to face an affordable housing crisis, particularly for, particularly for low and moderate income households. We need to continue to build enough homes to meet, the, to meet the demand, thereby keeping prices low enough to not overburden first time and first generation home buyers and residents. I want to extend my heartfelt thanks to Governor Hobbs and to all the partners and stakeholders and su supporters who have, made, who have worked tirelessly to bring this program to fruition. As we support the launch of Arizona's Is Home, I encourage all eligible individuals and families to explore the opportunities it offers and take the first steps towards achieving the dream of home ownership. Together we can create a strong, more resilient Arizona where, our, where every family has a place to call home. And now I'll introduce Robin Romano from uh, the Arizona IDA. Robin? Uh, good morning. I'm Robin Romano, from, uh, the chairman of the Arizona IDA, as well as the chairman of Arizona Finance Authority. My paying job is I am the CEO of Modern Soul Federal Credit Union, a certified community development financial institution, as well as a minority deposit institution. I would like to thank Governor Hobbs for securing this historic investment in housing with a bipartisan budget agreement. So thank you also to uh, Joan uh, Service and the Department of Housing for her department's support and prioritizing home ownership solutions. The Azita program will offer two mortgages, a below market interest rate for VA, uh, FHA and USDA loans and a below market interest rate conventional loan with a 4% down payment or closing cost assistance uh, for the 13 counties outside of Maricopa and Pima. The eligible borrowers will have to be of 80% average median income for their county and this product, uh, rural product, should reach up to 185 home buyers. The down payment assistance program will be a 0% loan for give, uh, forgivable mortgage. Uh, my credit union serves uh, these borrowers, these low and moderate income borrowers here in Maricopa County. I see daily the struggles that families are currently having affording a home under the current interest rate market, as well as, quite frankly, saving enough money for down payments or for closing costs on ever increasing home prices. These products, these below market interest rates, will help these borrowers qualify for homes. And home ownership is a pathway to building wealth for themselves and for their families. My credit union's mission is financial empowerment through equitable, affordable solutions. Uh, and this, quite frankly, is the entire focus of all of these programs in the Arizona Is Home. Azita has been doing down payment assistance for years. Our uh, intrepid IDA director, Dirk Swift, was instrumental in combining the down payment and of below uh, market with below market interest rates. 
He has worked tirelessly to promote these new products all across our state. In fact, I'm pretty sure he's going to need new tires for his cars because he's gone so many places. So far, it's been received with unbelievable amount of support, and it is wonderful to officially open it up. Under Governor Hobbs, we now have three Azita and AFA board members who all represent a variety of certified CDFIs. As a board, these products speak to our greater mission to serve the citizens of Arizona and make sure that our impact is felt on all four corners of this great state. I would like to introduce uh, from Trellis, Brenda Lopez. Good morning, my name is Brenda Lopez and I have been with Trellis for 12 years, but I have been working to create homeowners for 20 years. Um, and I am just so grateful and want to thank um, Governor Hobbs for this historic investment in housing and the Arizona Department of Housing and, Sur and Jones Service for prioritizing homeownership solutions like Arizona is home. Trellis is proud to be part of this solution. Homeownership is the American dream that now is even harder to achieve, but through hard work, dedication, and resources like the Arizona is Home, we will help Arizona families reach independence and financial security. This investment also contributes to economic growth and job creation. By providing down payment assistance and interest rate reduction, first-time homebuyers will help narrow the wealth gap and ultimately build generational wealth. Established in 1975, almost 50 years of creating homeowners through teaching, building, and lending. Our, our, Trellis's vision of in Arizona where everyone has a place to call home, funding, uh, this funding will help this vision come to fruition. Trellis has helped over 4,200 families purchase their first home, build or rehabilitate almost 400 homes, trained and educated and counseled over 48,000 families and individuals with financial management, primarily to buy a home, originated and facilitated over 2,520 mortgage loans, totaling in an estimated 247 million. And during the Great Recession, Trellis helped save more than 4,814 homeowners from foreclosure. We've done this work with many great partners with various cities and towns like the City of Phoenix, who's here today, um, the WISH program in partnership with Western Alliance, and many community banks. So we have worked in this very neighborhood for over 30 years, and we built and rehabilitated, rehabilitated approximately 80 homes in this Garfield neighborhood, including two that are on this corner um, street. We are pleased to be doing this work with another HUD nonprofit organization that also has the capacity to lend statewide. I want to um, give a hand out to CPLC community. Uh, Chicanos por la Causa and Alicia Nunez is acting president is here representing Chicanos por la Causa today. So we are very pleased to be working with CPLC in this joint partnership. And as, an ex as a successful example of how these programs have helped families, I would like to Welcome, Jesse. Um, he has been one of our recipients of this funding and also has purchased one of the Garfield homes. Jesse? Thank you to all you guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. Owning a home has been one of my dreams. Um, so I was actually a person who actually was ever um, going to need assistance. I graduated from a great um, high school, Brophy. I went to graduate from ASU. Um, started a family with my fiance. She was with me for 13 years. Um, actually, we're on our way home from church, and then we we're in a tragic car accident by a drunk driver. Um, made her made that left me a single father, left her kids motherless. I had to get rehabilitated to get back into the life and the swing of things. And um, my, so my dream of going to law school and chasing a career I had to put on hold because I had uh, these kids were there were three and five when the car accident happened. So they're in um, kindergarten, and I had. To, to get them to school, I had to be the one to take them, bring them back. Um, so I got a job right across the street from their school as a server. In the morning, it was a breakfast place. So it worked perfect, actually. I would drop them off, go to work. By the time they closed, they'd get out of school. And so that actually was really, really nice. Um, but the next step for me and my fiance was to get a house. Um, and so once the tragedy happened, um, obviously, once I got back in the swing of things, getting a house seemed very, very far-fetched. 
Um, I met this um, uh, realtor, her name was Lucy Gottsfried. She's the one who introduced me to a uh, trellis and some um, trellis was then able to, I was able to work with trellis and they were able to help me out and tell me, teach me about all these wish programs and things like that, they were able to get me a house. Um, so once I was able to get the house, um, my kids are a little bit older now, my daughter's in eighth grade, she just got into, got accepted into Xavier, very, very proud of her, proud of that for her. And my son's, um, he's 12. Um, so they're a little bit older now. So now like, I feel like now I got the house, I've been there for three years. I moved in actually, for four years, excuse me. I moved in a day before the shutdown. So when I moved in, the next day the shutdown happened, which is kind of its own little crazy thing because I was a server at that time and then I was furloughed and I got, when I got the house. So, But that's neither here nor there. Um, fast forward to so today, um, my daughter, they're, they're going into high school. So I feel like um, I have a good footing that I could pursue my goals and my dreams. Now I have them because of, all because of the house really because of where I'm at and um, I take pride in it and it's bringing a lot of uh, a, it's been a lot of pr bring a lot of pride I guess you could say and so um, I can only thank them for them thank the assistants um, like I said I graduated with a political science degree so I very well know I was kind of educated in all like the things I, I've seen the gap of the, the the medium income low income how it's kind of like disappear or disappearing and things like that and so um, Things, programs like this really, really help out a lot. And they help out people like me who experience tragedies or who actually need the help. And, um, I have no more gratefulness to say, really. Yeah, thank you, though. But I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank all you guys for coming. Thank you guys again. Um, yeah, I don't know. Thank you. So roughly with the entire program, uh, we anticipate 500 families. And, um, how do people apply? Uh, so, so folks who are working with lenders, either if they come in through Trellis or CPLC, will be directed to the program if they're eligible, or if they're working with other lenders who are, you know, f the, the lenders are familiar with the first-time homebuyer programs, and so they can direct them as well. Yep, yeah. Governor uh, Patricio Espinosa, ABC 15. Uh, this program, there's certainly no question that it would help families. Yes. Yet at the same time, we're standing here in a really old traditional neighborhood, Garfield, who has become kind of a centrification center. The two homes on the street that you speak about, each one is $400,000. So this will help. What can the state do about that? Well, we certainly have a challenge when it comes to affordable housing, both on the on the home buyer side and on the rental side. And there's a lot, like a lot of the challenges we're facing in the state, it's going to take more than just one approach. This is one approach to help those first time home buyers who are just, quite frankly, priced out of the market right now because of these of these increasing home prices uh, that don't look like they're going down anytime soon. So, um, so. So do we need to do more? Absolutely. Um, am I really proud of the step we're taking today? Absolutely. Follow up, Governor. You vetoed the, the, the last bill. There was a reason behind that. Is this your way of making up or getting closer to what your administration needs? Uh, so my administration is actively negotiating with uh, legislators on housing legislation that is moving through, that is going to help us uh, increase the supply of housing, which is absolutely something that needs to happen. Uh, and I'm I'm optimistic that we'll get uh, a bill or package of bills to my desk that will help do that, and perhaps even include some of the provisions uh, in the bill that that was vetoed. Thank you, Governor. Other on topic? No more on topic. All right, moving on, Howie. A few other things going on this week, Governor. Yep. Um, let's talk about you issued an executive order back in June of last year. Yeah. 15 county attorneys of their, all their authority to prosecute abortion cases. That law's only been used once in 50 years, mm -hmm. in one specific case of one specific county attorney. How do you think that you have the authority to tell elected officials what they can and cannot do? As I've said regarding multiple executive orders I've issued, they are not issued willy-nilly just because I can. We uh, did thorough research, and I am very, very confident in the legal ground that we stand on with this executive 
order. And, you know, if somebody wants to challenge that, go right ahead. I'm very confident that we're on legal, solid legal ground here. And, um, you know, I think it's really critical that in this moment where women do not have access to health care that they need, that we don't have overzealous county prosecutors utilizing this ban to indiscriminately prosecute and criminalize people seeking or providing needed health care. Quick follow-up to that. We talked to some people, including Planned Parenthood, who said, you know, as long as we've got that 60-day window, we're fine. After that, we've got you and Chris Mays. They are I, I cannot imagine that Planned Parenthood said, we're fine. <laughs> no, okay, but what I'm saying is they will continue to, to perform. What they said is that after that, if, if, if the only thing they have to rely on is an executive order, how do you convince them that they should continue to do the procedure when, in fact, the, the court has issued a mandate? There is, there is no guarantee that the stay on the, on the 1864 ban will be continued past the 14 days or whenever this goes back to court. There's no guarantee that will happen. I am not going to tell Planned Parenthood they should continue to provide services based on our executive order. That is solely a decision up to them. But... I want to make sure I'm doing everything in my power to ensure that uh, folks who are providing care can do so under the confidence that um, an overzealous prosecutor isn't going to go after them and criminalize their professional behavior or that people who seek care uh, won't, uh, won't be prosecuted. The, the fact of the matter is the laws in our state are very chilling. And providers are not even providing services that are legal, exemplified by the story that you heard at the press conference on Tuesday. Um, and that and Morgan has told that story multiple times related to abortion restrictions. On a related note, you know, once that 45 day or 60 day window, whatever it ends up being, expires, abortion will be most likely completely unavailable in the states until the law changes. Now, we're trying to repeal the law. That Yeah. Yes. I'm ready to do whatever it takes to get the 1864 ban repealed, um, and I think a special session is absolutely an option. However, you saw what happened yesterday. The votes obviously are not there. And it's, it's, it's obvious that calling a special session right now would not be productive to get this done. Um, we're, we're in conversations to find out what the, what, the, what the possibilities are. And if I'm confident that it will be productive and we can get this done, then, then yes, we'll do that. Sure. I mean, she called to just express her concerns about the ruling. Uh, we talked about how important it is to do everything we can to protect uh, reproductive freedom in our state and across the country. And I, I told her how appreciative I am of the White House's focus on this and what they're doing to, uh, to, to elevate and protect uh, rights at the national level. I, I won't be in Tucson tomorrow, no. Governor? Um, we're having conversations, and, you know, this is a highly sensitive and controversial topic, and I, I'm not going to out anyone that we're talking to, but we're having conversations. I mean, this, this, this ruling is devastating, and I know that people across the state are reeling from it. And as governor, I will continue to do everything in my power to ensure that women across the state can access the care that they need when they need it. And I will continue to fight to repeal this ban. I've also called on the legislature to protect IVF and guarantee access to contraception. Uh, and, um, you know, I, I know that 
it, it sounds awful to say we have a, an option to change things in November because right now things are so uncertain and chaotic, but but there will be a ballot measure in November. And I encourage people to exercise their ability to have a say on that ballot measure to enshrine abortion in our state's constitution. Governor, you mentioned the ballot measure. To what level, or is there any coordination between your team and the Arizona for Abortion Access campaign apparatus? And are you also working with the Biden campaign? Uh, so I will say as governor, uh, in my official capacity, nobody from my office is working on the ballot measure because that would, it, that is prohibited. Uh, but on the political side, my team is, is actively engaged. And I said many times, and I will continue to doing everything I can to support the ballot measure, uh, because it is so critical. One or two others. Governor, uh, can I get to, she has a yeah. is, is, is that your main hope right now is that that's kind of the final solution at this point, seeing as you're still in negotiations with when it comes to that law, and it seems like Republicans aren't there on it? There, There is no guarantee. I, I mean, I'm confident that the ballot measure is well on its way to making the ballot, but there's no guarantees, and there's no guarantee that if challenged in court, the Supreme Court won't come back with a terrible ruling. Uh, but I'm confident that, that, you know, if it's on the ballot, it will be supported by Arizonans. Uh, between now and then, um, if the 1864 ban is repealed, we're still stuck with the 2022 ban. And the bottom line is that these decisions should not be between a, a person who needs health care and the government and politicians. It should be between a woman and her doctor. And that is the ultimate goal right there. Just to kind of follow up on that, I mean, we, we have the eyes of the nation on Arizona right now. And I mean, this is maybe yes. international news. Yeah. I mean, we have the vice president coming here tomorrow. So what is the message that you have for Americans who are paying attention to Arizona right now, and, and especially um, lawmakers in other states who may be considering doing the same thing in their states? I mean, this fight is absolutely not over, and uh, I will continue to use every everything in my power to make sure that Arizonans have access to health care. Governor, back to the special session. Mm -hmm. So it's our understanding that the votes are there, but the holdup is leadership. They don't want to put, put this bill up for a vote. Um, why not use your political muscle to force them to vote on it when... Just, be, just because I call a special session doesn't require them to do anything different than happened yesterday. Leadership can still keep it off the board. Um, and, and so I, I, th th right now that's not the right path forward. Pulpit, if nothing else? Uh, yes, I have a bully pulpit, but I just like that's just not that right answer right now. I mean, it's it's it is not going to be productive to do that at this moment. No, absolutely. And that is part of the, the problem of the situation we're in right now, that there is a lot of confusion and uncertainty. And, and, and this ruling has an incredibly chilling effect on people providing care that their patients need. And so I would never tell any doctor, you have to do this. Um, they have the, the executive order to rely on. They have attorney general's word that she won't prosecute. Um, but they have to make their own choices in terms of what's best for them. And I hope that they will continue to provide care. I hope Arizonans can continue to access care. Um, but I absolutely understand why they wouldn't want to. And again, that is why it is so critical that we repeal this ban. All right, I got to call it. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.